So, JP? Hi, Ron. We've been at this for almost a year now. That's right. We're coming up on our anniversary. I know. Are we going to do something for that? What are we going to do? Like, I mean, Sheriff Lobo. Oh, so nice. Sheriff, Sheriff Lobo? Yeah, that's that'd be what great. leading up to me. Is, uh, <laughs> one year, we could do an episode on Sheriff Lobo. That'd be great. So... Gary Glenn Larson, Gary Larson, Gary Glenn yeah, Larson. Glenn Gary Glenn, Larson. Yeah. yeah. He's the creator of uh, Sheriff, Sheriff Lobo. That's right. For our new listeners who may just be turn, tuning in. Yeah, for those who don't know. our fascination with uh, bad 70s television. I mean, if, it, if I had my brothers, this would actually become a bad 70s television podcast. Right. No. But you won't talk about uh, his, his true uh, original creation, Battlestar. Right, he created Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? But you won't, we won't, you won't go there. I, I, t- I talk Battlestar. Yeah, but you won't do the spoiler episode on uh, Battlestar. Oh, on the uh, the modern series? Mm-hmm. No, I'm not mm-hmm. that guy. I like that show that much. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll never do the uh, Battlestar Galactica episode, but we'll do a spoiler episode on Lobo. Also, because it's just a, yeah, yeah. I will spoil share of Lobo, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's. It's also just, it's hard to just, when you get that last season of Battlestar, it's like hard to start describing things. Yeah. It's like, well, it's just a bunch of goofy stuff, but uh, <laughs> damn it, you take that voyage with those characters. Yeah. So. I don't think I'll ever take that voyage again, though. I don't uh, know. I did. I don't I've, know. I've taken it twice so Have far. You? Yeah. yeah. And Caprica. Oh, that's rough. No, uh, Eric Stoltz. I'll watch anything with Eric Stoltz, including The Fly 2, Ooh. which I watched many times. Ooh. Um, folks, who are we? We Jay are. Hunt? Devo, no. We are Delusions of Granular, a podcast that deals predominantly with the topic of... Star Wars. Yes. We've been at it for almost a year, so as you can imagine, we have quite a backlog. We are a weekly podcast, and we haven't missed a goddamn week in a whole year. That's right. And that's pretty impressive. Go to Delusions of Granular, that's G-R-A-N-U-L-A-R for you new listeners, dot com. And you can hear all of our old episodes. We're also on iTunes and Stitcher and all those great places. You can leave reviews if you enjoy it. Ron, how can they reach us on social media? They can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash SWDog. Like us there, and uh, you'll be able to follow our uh, posts and content and whatnot. And um, also interact, of course. We always encourage oh, yeah, everyone to totally. be part of the show. Yes. Um, you can also uh, follow us on Twitter at SWDog77. Right. Um, you can always email us at uh, SWDog77 at gmail.com. And if we uh, read uh, your email and like it, we may or may not use your uh, email on the show and give you a shout out. I can encourage each and every one of you listening right now to pull out your cell phone and dial the number 651-33-SW-DOG. The number again is 651-337-9364. Uh, you will be directed to our hot voicemail line where you can leave your own thoughts queries questions uh comments criticisms etc that's right and that's right. Uh, we, we welcome will... all uh comments and uh, feedback we take all comers that's right and um yeah be literally a part of the show that's right and folks if uh if if anything if you like the show you like star wars you like podcasts you know what uh, someone else that likes star wars and podcasts recommend us to your friends Star uh, Wars and or podcast. Yeah, we, you know, all the social media machinations and iTunes and Stitcher doesn't mean a thing. It's all hooey. Yeah. If you share us with a friend, you know, that's more important to us than, you know, the the establishment, the yeah. man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Steve Jobs is dead. That's Long right. Long live friendship. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh Ban, well, ban from iTunes now. <laughs> yeah, or we've just been flagged. <laughs> Uh, do we have anything really to discuss this? It's like such a slow time for Star Wars. You know, in times of times of trouble, I like to reflect. Okay. I like to look back. Yes. I like to ponder the questions of Star Wars that have troubled me since time immemorial, or rather, 1999. Mm-hmm. Tonight, I, uh, for your listening pleasure, I would like to point us at one character in specific. Darth Maul. Darth Maul. Darth Maul. Darth Maul. Died. Died in uh, Phantom Menace. If you've only watched the films, that's probably what you think. Is yeah. One and nope. done. One and done. One yeah. and done, and then replaced done. with Dooku and Grievous. That's right. Right. Totally marginalized by George Lucas. Set us up for this great character, awesome super, character design, and super killed hype. him off, and he's done. 
right? Super hype pre-movie on all the posters, on all the marketing right. materials. What more is there? He was the face of the Phantom Menace, practically. Right. What What more? What more can he give us? Well, Ron, uh, as you may or may not know, listeners, there is a canon now that Disney owns Star Wars. That canon involves six films. A little TV show like called The Clone Wars that went for six seasons? Six seasons, yes. Six seasons. And uh, the other cartoon show, Rebels, which is an abomination. Oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> Sorry, I don't even go there. Also includes uh, up to four books now, five books. Something like that, sure. And, um, and the ongoing Marvel comic book series and the final comic book miniseries from Dark Horse from last year, Darth Maul, Son of Dathomir. That's right. These are all canon. And some of them shed a little bit more light on a character named Darth Maul. So this is all telling the story of everything that happened before Phantom Menace because he dies in Phantom Menace. Well, that's not true, Ron. Well, he appears to die. But just to say, that's like saying Anakin died in um, Revenge of the Sith. Right. You know? Right, right. In some ways. Some I ways, suppose yes. you're right. Some ways, no. In some ways, not so much. I mean... So in the Clone Wars, you've probably heard about it. You might think it's dumb. I see it a lot in comments. Someone will post something from the Clone Wars and shows Darth Maul. Yep. With his, let's get out of the way. Let's put it at the top. His robot spider legs. legs. <laughs> robot spider legs. Robot yeah. legs. Yeah. Because um, he was cut in half. He was cut in half. He lost his legs, folks, and other extremities. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we they don't get too graphic in Star Wars, but it's just... Yeah. Didn't lose something. Yeah. Well, we don't know how Dath Mirian works. That's true. It's true. He still has his horns. (laughs) Oh. (laughs) Oh. Okay. Anyhow. All right. Yeah. So the big thing here is that uh, what we all thought he died uh, was resurrected by uh, Mr. Dave Filoni in the Clone Wars. And and we've talked about this before, but we wanted to do kind of a more in depth episode about Maul himself. Mr. Maul. Mr. Maul and, uh, you know... Mr. Magic his, his, Maul. His, you know, do a granular take on uh, his his Clone War arcs as well as some of the novels and uh, beyond. Yeah, we, it's one of those things we're always referring to um, Mike Climo's ring theory on this show. Yeah. And it's interesting to find that, like, Darth Maul has a little bit of kind of a mirroring, like, arc thing going on himself that kind of mirrors other characters in this show. Sure. And he also has kind of a meta arc that I partially because, you know, this he's one of the characters who's one of the first who gets a lot of input from someone other than George Lucas. Yes. Right? Yes. With the, yeah. the Clone Wars. Yep. George Lucas was there approving everything in the Clone Wars. He was there contributing ideas. But this is the first time you get like an outside commentary that it his arcs actually start to reflect the way he's perceived in pop culture, in my opinion. Sure. So, without any further ado, should we just get right into it? Well, let me... Or do we want to talk about some EU pre stuff, too? Well, let, let's let's set this up a little bit better. Thank you, Ron. Okay. Ron's always keeping the ship sure. on the tracks. Well, I well, don't know if I'm always doing that, but I try. Well, Ron, don't be um, Folks, we've we've done an episode in the past, a, a double episode of uh, Anakin and Vader. And those episodes were called what again? Uh, Anakin, you feel the love tonight. And love in an elevator. Yeah. Yes. I'm uh, very, very proud of those. <laughs> we are titles. proud of the titles. <laughs> we may not be proud of the content, but we're damn proud of the titles. You know, for year two of this podcast, I'm going to make it my goal to kind of memorize the episode titles better. Nice. Because I was listening to some old episodes recently, and I was like, <sighs> every time we're always like, yeah, I refer you to our... You know, yeah. Darth Maul episode or something. Yeah. It's like, man, we have such good titles. We've got to start titles. Sure. using those better. Sure. Uh, so we wanted to do, you know, kind of another double episode. Uh, so this week we're going to cover um, Darth Maul. Yep. And next week we'll be covering um, Obi-Wan. That's right. Right? And you think, well, what's the connection there? Well, Obi-Wan killed Darth Maul. That's the connection. Uh, I say there's a different connection. These are two characters that were kind of marginalized um, by the movies. Right. These are uh, characters who serve specific you kind of uh, utility roles. Yeah. Like we all thought seeing upon seeing Darth Maul in the uh, advertisements for Phantom Menace that he was going to be our big bad for this new trilogy. Right. right. 
not so, right? We also thought that the prequels were going to be uh, the story of Obi Wan. Yeah, right? Obi Wan, who uh, old Ben, who had been a uh, a Jedi Knight, whatever that is. Yeah. Back in the Clone Wars, whatever that was. Yeah. And like how he was this great general that this prince, the young princess, was like knew of like almost like a myth. Right. And so it was like, oh, thank God, we're going to get to find out what his story is. Out. No, but he's sidelined. sidelined. Sidelined by Qui-Gon and then sidelined by Anakin. Little Annie. Right? Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll cover off on uh, Obi-Wan uh, next week. But yeah. this week we'll cover off on Maul. Because Maul is a character we both have been wanting to talk about for a while. Uh, we, we revisited some of the episodes that he uh, stars in in The Phantom Menace. We, sure. Or, I'm sorry, The Clone Wars. Yes. And uh, we've also read some of his books. So his storyline uh, covers both uh, legends and canon. Mm-hmm. Which is kind of unique, in yeah. a way, you know, in the, his pre uh, Phantom Menace uh, storyline is has been deemed a legend. Yeah, but his post uh, Phantom Menace storyline is canon. Yeah, and in a way, that's crazier than the uh, legends. Yeah, I mean, I think you could almost argue that he might be the. The character we know the least... Well, that's not true. I was going to say Yoda, I guess, actually. Yeah. We know less about Yoda. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, we know that Darth Maul is um, Sidious's apprentice. Apparently so. Apparently yes. so, yes. That gets right. a little more tangled up when you start getting into the pre-Phantom Menace thing. Sure. We know that um, from our... Uh, research that we did for our Plagueis episode that um, uh, Darth Maul was basically adopted by um, Palpatine, Mm -hmm. Sidious, uh, around the days of of Plagueis. Yep. And raised by droids, kind of raised to be kind of an assassin. Um, JP has lost his beer. He's got how many beers you got open? We've just counted three beers open here. There's only two of us in the room. It's fine. It's very odd. Don't touch my beer. Did you? Well, did you open two? I did not open two. Those are in front of you. Okay, let's be a good episode. Let's keep going. (laughs) Um, So Palpatine has uh, adopted uh, Maul and has raised him to be kind of a killer, kind of uh, an assassin of sorts to. Uh, kind of do Palpatine's dirty work. As I recall in the book, it's kind of treated like he is adopted from a character we'll, we'll talk about later. Yep. And is basically just put in a room and be like, okay, get really angry. Yeah. And yeah. like, Don't... and then they take him out around Phantom Menace. They literally like, like, tell him to be angry and not let out his aggression and at he's all. he's kind of raised ever. by battle droids and yeah. that's sort of his Just bag. keep getting angry and angry and angry but don't do anything about it until you pop. Which I thought was like kind of cool and also kind of like a massive cop out <laughs> yeah. by like Jay Luciano where it's yeah. just like James. James, James Luciano. Luciano. James Luciano. I think it's Luciano. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Great uh, writer. But I thought that was a well, I thought it was cool the Darth Maul stuff he included. I also thought it was kind of like weak that it was like, yeah, and they spent, you know, it's kind of like the Jesus thing. Yeah. You know, it's like, here's Jesus as a child. He's so amazing. He's doing all these great things. And now you hear him as a 30-year-old man. Right. You know, or it's right. like, what happened for those 20 years? It's like, oh, he's in a room getting angry. Well, so some of the other novels that take place before Phantom Menace that dwell on um, Darth Maul mm-hmm. uh, basically are like, okay, go on the secret mission and, you know, tied closely to, you know, kind of uh, the the whole plot line of the Trade Federation and the Moidians. And, right. You know, silencing, you know, one that might be leaking information and do this without letting yourself be known that you're a Sith or even that you exist. You know, so it's a very secretive missions that he's on. Right. Yeah. And let's back that up for a second. When I first saw the visuals for Darth Maul, mm-hmm. I was just like, A, I was like, this guy looks amazing. Yeah, he's badass. He looks super badass. Yeah. He's, uh, I think we talked about this on the show before. It's uh, that photo, that famous promo photo they use of just his face with the eyes. Yeah. Looks very reminiscent of the National Geographic photo of the... Um, 
The Iranian girl? Yes, the Iranian girl with the Iraqi, green eyes. Iraqi. Iraqi. I Iranian? can't remember. Iraqi. Yeah, Middle the, Eastern the, the, girl. Middle Eastern girl. Yeah. Uh, with the bright green eyes. Yes. Very famous photo. Yeah. Um, and I've since found out that he's taken a lot of inspiration in National Geographic photos. Really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Anyhow. Um, but I assumed, maybe because of the comics, because the comics kind of showed the Sith looking like this, yeah. that he was an actual... See, Sith I, race? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. like, I remember in the 90s, in the comics, of the Sith race being a thing. Right. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's kind of gone yeah. by the wayside They now. were kind of like red-faced devil-looking yes. guys. Yeah, yeah, devil characters. Yeah. But that has been deemed, like, that was deemed, like, legend before. Like, that was kind of, like, retconned before was everything was retconned. Back in the old days of, like, C-level continuity, yeah. D-level continuity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so everything before Phantom Menace, like we said, is, is really legend, right? Um, the legend of Darth Maul. Trained to be an assassin, kind of held back from doing anything real. But then he goes off on these side missions that Palpatine kind of lets him go off on. And, you know, we get to meet other other Jedi because the Jedi were around back then. We meet some smugglers and we meet, you know, some interesting characters. Specifically, you're talking about Darth Maul Shadowhunter. Yeah, Shadowhunter, right? yeah, where we yes. meet, you know, we, we see a kind of a scoundrel smuggler that kind of teams up with a Jedi and they're being hunted by, you know, uh, Darth Maul. This is very much in the mold of that era. Yeah. Of uh, kind of Shadows of the Empire-esque. Like, you have your Han Solo analog. He's got his, like, Chewbacca 3PO merged analog. Yeah, yeah. And, um... A droid that is an equal to a human. Yep, and then you got your main guy who... Now, I'm trying... The story's a little blurry now. It's been about a yeah. year since I read it, but it's, uh... He had given up his son to the Jedi, or... He did. Yes. He was like a janitor at the uh, yes. Jedi Academy, and you know, kind of had to give up his son because his son had ways in the Force. So he was kind of against the whole Jedi, and uh, you know, the circumstances in this book, um, he's ended up kind of teamed up with a Jedi, Yep. Um, and almost falls in love with her. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. The, that was an interesting portrayal of like what that Jedi culture was like. Yeah, yeah. because Clone Wars kind of a, like it's not really like that. The Jedi had robots to do janitorial gear. Right. Right. Well, yeah. Or no, because uh, in the fall of Ahsoka, don't we meet some people who worked at the Jedi Temple? We did. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, I guess yeah. it might still yeah, work. Yeah, you know. Yeah. People got to make a living. It's true. Yeah. And we're not. We can't all be force sensitive. Right. You know, and which it really does go back to the whole problem with the Jedi. The yeah, big problems. Yeah, they just take people away from their parents. We'll and, deal with that more. Yeah, than yeah, Obi-Wan. We'll, we'll get yeah, we'll get there. Obi Wan's a big problem, um, but I think the my key takeaway from this, uh, having I recently read the uh, Darth Maul Shadow Hunter, yeah, um, is uh, Darth Maul. Books is his storyline. Uh, he's more interesting, kind of being the uh, uh, unstoppable force and dwelling more on the uh, the other characters. Like the other characters to me are like they're more interesting. Like this Jedi who's you know kind of befriends the smuggler rogue type. Like they're more interesting to me. And then they keep running into Darth Maul, and Darth Maul is just like unstoppable force. And I call this the Boba Fett syndrome. Yeah, I did. And this is right? a, this was a trap that EU fell into a lot. Yeah, um, we talked about it on our Boba Fett episode, where uh, Book of Fett, where it's uh, they don't necessarily George hasn't told anyone what him like what this character is actually all about. Right. So when they like find a way to make him like, well, what do we know about him? Well, he's badass. He's mysterious. He's because mysterious. We don't know and he's badass. So why doesn't he just be like? Unstoppable predator like force. So these right. guys have to get away right. from him through the right. whole book. Yeah. And that's kind of what it is. Like he crashes through walls, he falls off planes, but yeah. like he keeps going. Keeps going. Can't yeah. stop him. He's the energizer He's bunny. Such a badass. And what was cool about um James Lucio's uh book, Darth Plagueis, was that it played within the confines of Shadowhunter as well. Yeah. Like Shadowhunter was in canon for that book. And um 
they portray so in the book you just hear like it's like he just won't stop he's like a machine he keeps coming and in, in uh the Darth Plagueis version, it's kind of from the Emperor's point of view. It's like, God, he just keeps fucking up. Yeah. Like, he just can't get this yeah. mission accomplished. Yeah. Like, and it, which I thought was kind of awesome. Right. Shadowhunter does a great job of kind of, like, you see, like, you know, the point of view of Darth Maul. And he's just like, I'm going to keep going after him. I'm going to keep going after him, even though I didn't catch him this time. And, and you, you know, they cut to Plague, uh, uh, Palpatine. And he's like, he screwed it up again. Yeah. He's just a. He's an idiot. He's a dummy. Like, I picked a bad one. Right? Yeah. He's a bad he's apple. Just, he's just... And that's kind of like a, a through line for the entire character. Is like, ah, this guy is such a badass. Like, look at him. Like, he looks like he's... Like, he's got horns. He's, he's black and red tattoos. Like, this guy just kick ass. And then you delve a little deeper and he's like, oh, he's, dude, he's just a fuck up. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Well, and that's an interesting too, because like Shadowhunter is written before Clone Wars. Yeah, and so that is a commentary on the character from an audience member. You know what I mean? Like, from, yeah. like so that's written by somebody who saw the movie and is kind of extrapolating. Yeah, it's like oh, he's a badass. You know, yeah. he's, you know, he's going on. You know, and like James Lucio's book is like after the Clone Wars, which we should. That's a good segue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So in the in the Clone Wars. Um, so we jump ahead past the this is Phantom season, Menace. Season four, I believe? Season three? Season three or four, yeah. Uh, and and I think it straddles the two seasons. They did a good job of like every season, they would kind of have one big highlight thing. Yeah, so folks, like, this season, Wookiees are going to be in it. Right. And if I, I would recommend doing what I did uh, in revisiting these episodes, is going, go on to uh, Wikipedia and do a search for Darth Maul. And at the bottom of his uh, long page. Yeah. Um, which we can't even dive into all of that's been written about him. It's too much. Right? Um, but it'll list, like, it'll give you kind of a long scrolling list of, like, uh, actual media that he's his story has been told in. Mm-hmm. Right? And what I did is kind of highlighted uh, just the episodes of the Clone Wars that he's in. Right? Yeah. And that's kind of a nice way to revisit the Clone Wars instead of watching it, like, episodically. Uh, season by season is yeah. just pick a character and and watch their storyline because you start to actually like understand their arc a lot more than when you're watching it combined with all these other characters' arcs. That is the interesting thing about the Clone Wars is that like they there's no judgment there because they told their whole story out of order anyhow. Mm-hmm. Like they didn't put the episodes in chronological order. Right, and his it kind of helps with the longevity of the show. His story is really told in eight, eight or nine episodes, and he's in half of those, or not half of those, but a couple of those episodes. He's really only like hinted at. Mm-hmm. So, like his storyline in the Clone Wars, you can watch it in you know a couple hours and really get a good idea of like, oh, this is what happened to this guy after Phantom Menace, after we presumed he was dead. Yeah, and. Um so, long story short, they uh, they kind of tease out the fact that, well, I guess we got to start with Savage Opress, don't we? Well, we have to start with... To explain who Savage is. So, we find out um, through a couple other characters that there is uh, there's a planet that uh, Darth Maul is from, Dathomir. Okay? And on Dathomir, there are these... Um, there's... There's females and males. The females are kind of known as night sisters, and the males are kind of known as, I guess, night brothers. But I don't think they're ever referred to that way. They're kind of like dumb grunts. And yeah, they're the kind of like trained like to. Yeah, yeah, that's a good Straight way to. Up. They're witches, and and men are trained to just fight. Yeah, they're all like barbarian men. Yeah, and like the night sisters occasionally. Rise one or two of them up. Yeah, and the and the Night Sisters have force like powers, but it's more magic, which Oh Sith like powers, I'd say. Sith like powers, sure. And that might sound like, oh my god, I can't believe this is Star Wars, but it it, it works in context. I, I liked it because it felt to me like they were tapping in the same exact type of thing, like the dark side. 
I feel like they were tapping on the dark side, but in a different way. Yeah. Like, they're not about force lightning. They're not about manipulating people so much. They're more about, like, weird, just gross, like, reanimating things. And, like, right. And and what what this storyline and, and this character, Darth Maul, really opens up in the Star Wars universe is the fact that not every bad guy is a Sith. Not every bad guy is a, a... There's other bad forces in the universe other than the Sith, right? Yeah. yeah. There's other evil lurking. You know, yeah, was... There's bounty hunters. There's also pirates. Right. So it's not was, just Sith. There's was, also Night Sisters. Right. Was Darth Maul a Sith? Like, was he a, really a, a Sith, or was he really just Palpatine's, like, pawn? Yeah, and that's really what they start pushing in the Clone Wars. Because if you start looking at it, you start talking about the rule of two. Yeah. And then you start breaking down the numbers. Well, Attack of Clones. Yeah. He's got Count Dooku. Count Dooku. Was he, just, he really a was he a Sith or was he a Dark Jedi? He recruit Count Dooku just in the past couple of years. Yeah. Count Dooku's kind of an old guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like is he a Sith or a Dark Jedi? Yeah. yeah. And it starts getting very messy very quick in terms of like how the rule of two works and where Darth Maul fits in everything. Right. So I know that the I I've I've kind of been skirting skirting around this one character because I feel like she's a whole episode unto uh, herself. But uh, really, the the character that kind of kicks off um, where Darth Maul's character starts in the Clone Wars is Asajj Ventress. Yep, right? Asajj Ventress. Really quickly, she's just Count Dooku's assistant yeah assassin, assassin right so and she's, she's like the apprentice of an apprentice of an apprentice right and she's betrayed by dooku yeah right and she goes back to uh her homeland which is dathomir mm-hmm. and she is uh one of the night sisters and she oh. she says look uh you know dooku is you know wronged me and we need to exact revenge on him and uh, Mother Talzin, who is the head night sister, yeah, kind cool of the character. mother of of uh, all of these witches. Witches. Uh, she's like, okay, we'll pick a, um, we'll have Dooku come, and he will pick a uh, new apprentice, right, from the the men night breed, right. Yeah. And he comes, and he kind of has the uh, this battle of the fittest uh and lo and behold one of and this is blurry but one of darth maul's brothers savage oppress kind of a uh bigger more stockier version of darth maul instead of uh red and black tattoos he's red or i'm sorry yellow and black tattooed but he's not big initially no i thought he was i thought he was big they they bu- they bulk they them up. They bulk them up. Yeah, oh. they hit him with the they hit him with the dark force stuff and bulk him up. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because like, remember that was the whole thing. It's uh, He's scrawny. I yeah, he used to, he, he was say like Darth Maul used to save him. Remember, and like, or was that the other thing? There's a whole other story. <laughs> this is the deal. Savage and Ventress have their own whole storylines. Yeah, very complicated. Because remember, like the whole thing where Savage was protecting his brother, or his brother was protecting him. Remember this whole Darth story? Maul? Like Savage, Darth Maul, somebody. I think it was Savage. Remember in the, the Clone Wars? Yeah, and like, like in the fighting pit, and well, how that all worked. Well, okay, so you know what I'm talking about? Yes, yes. Yeah. Darth Savage Oppress was a was kind of protecting the uh, basically. Another brother. Yes, this was when it was the Battle of the. The yes. fittest, right? And he was and this is what throws me himself, off, yeah. right? He ends up winning the battle, yes. right? And he becomes Dooku's new apprentice, and he's right? already bigger and brawnier than his other brother. Yeah, yeah. And the thing is, like, like there's a lot of double crosses already at work because they're like, well, you know, he becomes uh, Dooku's new apprentice, but like. Like, the Sith are so screwed up. Like, is Dooku Sid- Sidious's apprentice? And, you know, is this like Dooku's power play to overthrow Sidious by getting 
And it's one of those things where it's like, it's like, oh, no, Emperor. No, he's not my apprentice. Cause it's a rule, too. It's just you and me, brother. Right. This guy's just my assassin. I, I, yeah. I, I, I taught him a couple force things. Right. No big deal. <laughs> rule of two. I gave him but... a lightsaber. No big deal. Right. Rule of two. But rule of two is like, meh. Maybe rule of four. Rule of two and a Five half. Five at the most. Rule of two and a half. Half at best. I got him a shitty lightsaber. We both know lightsaber is the best way to kill somebody. Right. So so basically, Asajj Ventress and her uh, quest for uh, revenge against Dooku like, like gets Savage oppressed to be his new apprentice. Yes. Right? Even though he's out to... Savage Oppress is not smart. Let's let's no, throw that out. There. Well, he's a very he's good, a pawn by any means. I don't want to spend too much time on him, but yes, Savage is um, he's unique in yeah. the Star Wars universe in terms of honestly, we've never had a villain like Savage Press. He's pure physicality. He's pure physicality, and he's me- being manipulated by people smarter than him every step of the way. Yeah, I mean, they make a point of like showing he's a dumb character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's cool, and he's brawny, and he's you know he's kind of. He's just physical. He's yeah, tough. He's just a physical like, guy. There's um, like they give him a lightsaber, and he doesn't really even know what to do with it. And people, he's used to using blunt objects. Yeah, and people talk about like yeah, he's more like a Conan the Barbarian type. Yeah, like people would might say like, well, Darth Vader was physical and stuff. It's like no, not like this. Not like this. No. Like, there's like no grace here. Right. This is just pure blunt force. Right. Yeah. Right. So he he fails and. <laughs> The, the the death of Mirs are a long line of uh, failure. He fails in his attempt to kill Dooku, right? And he goes crying back to uh, Mother Talzin. Yep. Right? Mother Talzin is like, well, you need to now exact revenge on Dooku, and you need to do this by finding your brother. Yeah. Right? And your brother is, you know, and she pulls up the crystal ball, and you see our familiar Face. Yep, and it's a Wizard ball. of Oz crystal ball yeah. type. We see Maul. There he is. Darth Maul. Your brother right. is alive. Why do you mean he's alive? And it's right. like, and that's where, this is where I got struck. It's like, but your brother was the little yellow kid you were trying to save. Well, yeah, and But they don't know, no question about him anymore. No. We don't care about him. They're weak. It's Maul. They're weak. Well, yeah. you got to imagine that she must be manipulating him somehow. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's Because then I got confused. I was like, are they all brothers? Like, are all the men on the planet brothers? Yeah, I don't know. Like, they're know. grown? Are they born with a tattoo? Yeah, are like, they maybe they're, like, them? more grown than they're... I don't know. I don't know. So, Mother Talzin sends Savaz or Press off to find his long-lost... With a tracking necklace. ...thought-to-be dead brother, Darth Maul, with a tracking necklace. That necklace That's that glows gets. the closer he yeah, gets. Yeah. So, he goes and finds uh, uh, Darth Maul on a planet... Junk planet. A junk planet. Imagine Junkatron right. from uh, Transformers the movie, the cartoon. Sure. And, again, this is canon. Yeah. Uh, he teams up with a talking snake. Oh, yes. Now, so when we said we were going to go back and watch these shows, I remember the Darth Maul thing as being pretty gracefully done. Yeah, but the talking but, snake. But I had to keep watching it. I was like, I couldn't decide if I liked or did not like the talking snake. Because... The on the one th- hand, it's like, well, this is silly. Because you got to wonder, it's like, silly. how does he work? Yeah. Does he trade? Does he go off world? Yeah. And I was like, well, he has a bio suit. I mean, he's got some kind of suit he wears. He has no arms. No. No, he doesn't. Right. Yeah. It's also kind of, it could be kind of a mutant. It's like a junk, polluted planet. I think we see another of his race later on, though. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, snake. Talking snake. Talking snake. Also feels very Adam and Eve like to me. Sure. I don't know why. Yeah, it's like it's like, like no shade betrays you, dummy. Yeah, yeah. But it is kind of cool. What you find out is, so he does betray him, uh, drops him in a pit, expecting him to be killed, and then by like, this beast, his but, other the snake's master. The snake's like buddy. Yeah, yeah. and um, he and the snake comes back afterwards, and it's like. Did you kill him? Think we're gonna eat some? Like expecting to kind of eat the scraps. Yeah, it seems like they've yeah, done yeah, this yeah. little trick before. Yeah, uh, and but in the meantime, the beast that came out is a full blown crazy Darth Maul who's got this rickety kind of erector set style spider legs held together by force stuff seemingly. 
Yeah, we need to dive into what makes his legs because there's a whole set of different types of technology at play here. Oh, yeah. So we have we have Darth Maul crazy. Like Bat crazy, shit, crazy. Bat shit crazy. The voice right. actor who played him, uh, I read an interview with him, he was talking about really trying to like differentiate this character and show reverence and like get some layers going for this guy. Sure. So he's crazy. He's in this junk planet. He's doesn't know who he is, where he is, who Savage oppresses, nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And Savage Press, in a moment of clarity, does know who he is, and it's like, brother. 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 Brother, I learned about it a couple episodes ago. Yeah. You, you need to, I need to help you, right? And, and Savage is super dumb. It's so great, because he's just like, Together with victory! Imagine kind of like a dumb, evil Thor. Yeah. Like he's just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. we will go to victory over the rest of the galaxy! You know? Right. And I was like, ah, victory? What do you mean? Right. Like, and somehow he manages to kind of, A, bring him back to Dathomir. And B, uh, talk some sense into him. Is like, uh, you need, like, along with Mother Talzin. You need to exact revenge on the Jedi who did this. And by Jedi, I mean the entire Jedi. Like, all Jedi are bad, including Obi-Wan, but mostly all the Jedi are bad, right? Totes. So, he, he, takes, he takes his brother back to Dathomir, right? And Mother Talzin works some voodoo on him and gets him sane or yeah. more sane. Yeah, he's back in charge. Right. Big time. Still has the well. He's given now like uh, uh, long, like almost like ostrich legs. Right? They have like the the backward hinge knee. Oh yeah, I right? forgot about those legs. Yeah, I don't like those legs. No, those legs are dumb. I do not right? like those legs at all. I mean, design wise, it makes sense. It's like if you give me new legs, give me ones that can really run. Right, but. I much prefer it when he was wearing the fatigue scene. He's got the G.I. Joe legs. Right. Well, we'll get to those in a second. Right? right. So he's already had two legs. He's had crazy spider legs that he's made on his own. Yeah. And right? now, and you know, before we, like, there is a, a, a uncanny valley you have to cross here where it's like, wait, 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 wait. He's he was cut alive? in half. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Let's look at that for a second. Okay. So he's cut in half. I mean, honestly, I think getting the lower part of your bowels cut off yeah. might be a right. less extreme damage than what Anakin sustained. Well, you're sure. I mean, it's all cauterized. Like, it's healed. It's all cauterized. You got force power going for you, which we know is kind of plot putty. Yeah. You can fill in any of the cracks. Yep. Um, you know, he falls, lands, not quite dead. You know, maybe kills a rat, absorbs some life juice. Yeah, how does he get from Naboo to this other planet? Well, okay, you got to imagine <laughs> that yeah. at the bottom of this like thing is like a, a weather vane, and he's hanging there. Well, no, there's some kind of debris. You know, there's some oh, kind of like okay. debris cleaner. Ah, and he's probably swept into some kind of you know trash sure. compactor gotcha. thing, makes gotcha. force bubble I around buy it. it. I buy it. Sure. Shot off into space, lands sure. on Junkatron. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Befriends a little snake. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That, so that's the story of that's, that's, that's what we're, we have to Canon. That's what we have to go with because it's canon. Yeah. So that is canon. He is alive. All right. Yeah. So with his crazy force powers, he's managed to put together like spider spider legs. Straight up a Rector set style. Yeah. Out of scraps. Yeah. Right? This is like a Short Circuit 2 where Johnny Five goes punk. He's like that. Yeah. yeah. All right. So they go back to Dathomir and... Mother tells, and, and again, I'm just telling the story point from the point of view of the legs. You're doing a great job. Right? Keep going. Mother tells, and it's like, these legs are fucked up. Yeah, she's right? like, this is not going to fly. This is not going to fly. <laughs> like, you need two legs. This right? is Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to move around like this. No, what are you, we have like a, a scorpion? Yeah, we have a great design sense here. Yeah. This is messy. Yeah. yeah. So she gives them uh, backwards enlarged ostrich legs. Which is the first... I remember this is one of those things that like I didn't come to the Clone Wars until much later. Yeah. And this is one of those first things, like one of those like, news items that like broke out of just the closed circuit of Clone Wars. Yes. 
I remember like seeing a picture of it and it's like, God damn, it sucks. Oh yeah. It's so stupid. Right, right. Well the other thing that's stupid I remember stupid, like mocking it with you. Right. The other thing that's stupid is the fact that like their horns on the top of their heads grow. Get bigger. They grow. Right? Yeah. Without like getting a proper like horn cut, you know, every month. Like yeah. grooming. It's like deer. Like animals. your horns yeah, your horns grow and you gotta you know, you gotta you gotta groom yourself. Well, and also, no, I do believe it's true that uh, so Savage was brawny, I think, when he was chosen. Yes, but I do believe they supercharged him. And I remember in that supercharging scene, I'm pretty sure his horns grow. Okay, the, and this will tie back to the leg thing. Okay, okay, because whatever it's the horns were a sticking point for me. Yeah, also. whatever voodoo that that the Night Sisters are are working with here yeah it's like a green misty magic okay yeah. like like when they're Focus. when they're they're giving malls new legs you see this green mist right right later on uh spoiler like uh savage press gets his arm cut off right and instead of being cauterized like a typical jedi or sith when they get an arm cut off like green mist comes out. Really? Yeah. So Savage, like, that happens to Savage? It happens to Savage. She gets his arm that. cut off and green mist comes out. I'm like, okay, this is different. This is a different kind of magic. Hmm. This isn't the force. This is like whatever the witches are doing. You know, like they have some kind of control and it, you know, there's, there's green mist magic coming, you know, out of these people. Yes. Right? This entire race. Huh. Anyway. But like, that's weird though because like we... Yeah, it's well, weird. We, we because saw, it's we saw like, Darth Maul get cut in half. Right? We didn't see any green mist. No, no green we saw mist. some red mist. Like that was supposed to be like blood or something. Yeah, but, like yeah, it, you know, uh. kind of a little bit of a retcon there, or maybe. Well, Savage whatever. was pumped up. Sure, he was pumped up. Anyway, green mist. back to the legs. Yeah, back right. To the legs. Darth Maul gets new legs, and they're kind of awkward looking, big and bird like, and I'm like, hmm, yeah, the the Athamir people. They don't have good leg technology, mm. right? Not good at all. Like, it's a it's an upgrade from the spider legs, the erector set spider legs, but it's still not that good, right? Right. Right. So, anyway. It's good. It's not aesthetically good. It's not aesthetically It's not good, Coruscant right? aesthetically good. Right. Yeah. It's not Mandalore good. No. no right? No. We'll get there. So, he gets the legs. He's, you know, now in control. He's, you know regained you know some some level of coherence and he's like dead set against exacting revenge on the jedi right obi-wan in particular no he's dead set on dead set on yes yes so he goes you know he he, he tracks down uh uh ahsoka and uh, all right ahsoka fought maybe uh, that's not getting that's no. not getting too much he, he goes into he, like he goes to fight Obi Wan. Yeah. Obi Wan. Doesn't Obi Wan again cut off his legs? Might. Yeah. That happens. That again. would explain like, why they get rid of it. Yeah. Right. And it's like, Darth Maul, you are an idiot. Like, like you've had your legs now cut off twice. Yeah. That is like once shame on you. <laughs> yeah. Twice shame, shame on me. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, uh, I mean, like, the thing is with Maul is. He becomes a character of pure hate at this point, where he's got hate for the Jedi. Yes, because he's because he's hated the Jedi since forever. He hated the Jedi when we met him in Phantom Menace. Yeah, double triple hate on um, Obi because Obi, you know, fucked Obi. up his whole bag with the Emperor. Yeah, triple hate on the Emperor for not coming after him. Right, because notice the Emperor was like, Annie's legs get cut off. He's like, Oh, hey, Annie, come on. Right, I'm gonna get my little right. black suit. Right. Um, you know, none of that for Darth. Right. You know, Darth, uh, Darth Maul had to deal. All right. I want to, I want to go into a couple different directions here. Hate for Dooku. Cause that's the second uh, apprentice. Sure. Couple different directions here. One, um, I want to go back to the Phantom Menace. Okay. Of course, of course. Because I think one of the common, uh, misinterpretations of the Phantom Menace is the fact that when when Qui-Gon first encounters um, 
Darth Maul. Yeah. That we, we as an audience think that he thinks he knows who, who or what Darth Maul is. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And I think it reads a lot better, and I think it's re- is really George Lucas's intention. And this is where the fact that the stories are told all out of order and all the marketing that led up to the movies kind of throws us off. Yeah. Is the fact that, like, I think when, when Qui-Gon first encounters Darth Maul in the desert, he has no clue what this force of nature is. Right. Okay. Because, again, not again, but like, as it's told to us in the movie, the Sith have been extinct for thousands of years. Right. Right. Now, this this came up in, in the Shadow Hunter book because the smuggler he he immediately thinks that this this force of nature that's attacking him is well, it's got to be a Sith. Okay. And I call bullshit on that. Okay? Well, if you're attacked by something today, right? Oh yeah. Right? Do you do you think immediately that it's something that was around thousands of years ago? Yeah, that's like, oh, clear it's a Shaolin yeah, warrior. A Shaolin monk. This is yeah. like, oh my god, I've been attacked by a Shaolin monk. And no, it, you think it's a mugger or something like a gangbanger or something. That right? said though, the Star Wars universe does seem to move in a different way than ours. That's true. In terms of like progress like because it also seems like the technology a thousand years ago is pretty much the same as the technology they had that's true it's true know? but i would say this that i i like to think that in the phantom menace the reason that qui-gon is defeated is because he really had no idea that he was really dealing with a sith hmm. right you never actually like witness qui-gon saying that it's a sith right like well, just and in, until after his death, that that Mace and Yoda are like, well, the Sith are the Sith. Sith. This is a Sith, possibly a Sith. I well, here's my thing: is that I don't know if it belongs in this episode or the Obi Wan episode, but okay. So Qui Gon is killed. Yeah, but then comes back as a Force ghost. Well, whereas Yoda and Obi have to go into the Force to become Force ghosts. Right? They disappear. Qui-Gon's like straight up killed. Oh, yeah. He doesn't disappear. No. Right. Because he learns it afterwards. He learns it in the afterlife. Like, he's the first one that learns it. How to become a ghost. Funky. Okay. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, we'll get to that. But, um... There'll be some crossover in these two episodes. I think that's why we're doubling them up. Yeah. Yeah. They're bookends. Um... Okay. So, he loses his dumb ostrich legs. Right. And then now is where we get to see the good points of Darth Maul. This is where it gets very yeah. interesting because he realizes he needs to basically form an army. Yeah, because Darth Maul was trained not only as a amazing Sith, but like part of that training is that like uh, clouding the minds of others, getting them under your sway, and amassing power. Yeah. That's the big Sith game. Yeah. yeah. And he's never really gotten to play the amassing power game because he's always been in the shadows. Right. He, uh, if you look at it, really, that's what the Emperor... The Emperor really got a lot out of Darth Maul by being like, I'm going to have an apprentice that I do not allow to amass any power. Yeah. Thus is never a threat to me. But what he gets is a non-effective apprentice then. Right. Like the apprentice is just, he's a just fuck screws up. up every, yeah, every, every, step, every of step of the way. Yeah. Yeah. So with his next one, he's like, okay, I got to make sure they have some power. Yeah. But, you know, just keep them stupid. Yeah. You know, like, you know that's what he does yeah. with Vader. Anakin's fit that role Anakin. perfectly. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, it's, it's like, what you're saying is like. Implied narrative. It's implied. Very good. Yeah. Very good. It's implied narrative. Like. You never once not like, in Clone Wars or the movies they say these things. No, but it's it's there. It's totally. there throughout. And whether it's Lucas's original intention that this is who that character is, or if it's you know Dave Filoni's way of kind of extracting that from you know between the lines, mm-hmm. you know, like it's there. Like yeah. Darth Maul serves a purpose. He he 
to the fans, to the 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 Star Wars fans that went to see the Phantom Menace that wanted this hero or this this villain to continue onwards yeah. and be the main villain in the movies, like, and were disappointed by that, like, like that was never his goal. And that's why that was I, never the intention for Darth Maul. Darth Maul was to, again, whether this was Lucas's idea or if Dave Filoni pulled it out of the context, like, like it makes sense. Like Darth Maul is born to be a failure. And that exact you said it right there. That's the perfect born to be a failure because that's why I kept saying early on that this is he's got like a meta narrative. Mm-hmm. Because he's got this narrative where, like, what I said makes perfect sense in terms of continuity. That, like, the Emperor had chosen him as someone who was easy to, like, keep in the shadows and never allow to amass any power, thus being never a threat. Right. But at the same time, in the real, real world where we live, like, here is this character that was super, super hyped, never given a chance, literally cut down yeah. <laughs> on his first outing. Yeah. And it's like, so then naturally that just becomes how we perceive him yeah you know as this character who had all this great potential that we all expected all these great things from but who was just kind of wasted right left to wither on the vine right and that's what his storyline becomes and this is where it gets interesting now is that in the clone wars then he uh starts to amass an army he starts to realize that he was cut down and before he had a chance to develop and he starts to amass an army amass some power yes and the Jedi are accounted for. The Sith, you know, the Emperor's got all that stuff covered. So what's the third option? He goes to Mandalore. The Mandalores. Yes. The Mandalores, which the Mandalores at this point in history are, are, are basically... Uh, the Mandalores he goes to are basically an outcasted uh, uh, sect of the Mandalorian uh, Empire. Aren't aren't no aren't they the Death Watch or the Death? the Death Watch and basically yeah. what again what what Dave Filoni is so good at doing is weaving in stuff from the EU yeah. into what eventually becomes canon. Uh, the Mandalorians were known as a race of warring people. I think Spartans. Yeah. Yeah. And since then they have been. Uh, uh, They've turned their ways, and you know the the leaders, um, uh, Satine, yeah, in particular, has uh, turned them into more of a, a peaceful, passive race. It seems like they kind of had reached a point of no return. They'd reached a point almost at the brink of like existential annihilation. Right, but like war but, had gotten to such a bad place where it was like. There won't be a Mandalore if we keep doing this. Right, but and this, they pulled back the sect. Uh, this rebellious sect of the uh, uh, Mandalorian race, the Death Watch, uh, doesn't agree with her, and they kind of go underground. Yeah, they can't let their warrior their warrior ways go. Right. They want to still be warriors, and they still want to fight. And and Darth Maul taps into this. He finds them, and he recruits them to be in his army. Which, once again, is such a great mirroring of themes. Then, mm-hmm. where now it's like, so Darth Maul is this warrior who was kind of cut off before he could do, fulfill his purpose because the purpose was to be like Darth Vader essentially right but he could never do that because right. he died right you know and it's like then there's this Mandalorians who like they were always trained to be the greatest warriors ever and then one day they flip the switch on him and said no we're peaceful now yeah and so he taps right into that and he right. uses that emperor thing on him too right I was like oh this sucks right yeah. I know what you feel yeah come on and and from a like from a fan point of view, like this is total like this is fan service. We're going to take a character that's like in design, it's totally kick ass. Yeah. I mean he's got horns, he's got red and black tattoos, he's a Sith, he's got the double bladed lightsaber. He's double bladed lightsaber. Right? I always forget about that, yeah. Right? Let's team him up with everybody's favorites. The Boba Fett people. Yeah, yeah right? the Boba Fett people. <laughs> yeah. Right? So now we have, like, this kick-ass guy who we know isn't really kick-ass. He's kind of a fuck-up. Yeah. Right? But in design, he's kick-ass, yes, right? Yes. Let's team him up with the Mandalores, the Boba Fett people, right? And make an army, yes. right? And, 
like it plays out like it's destined to fail because Death, Darth Maul is a fuck up, right? And we're dealing with outcasts that just want to fight. And that's what elevates it above fan service. Yes, because they don't. Uh, but man, in talk about fan service though, they really do tie it all together. If you're a '90s fan, then this is if this doesn't like wet your whistle, I don't know what will. Because they get those guys involved, and then they go get the Black Sun. Right, the Black Sun is now tying into Shadows of the Empire, which is basically Prince Shizor's, uh his his black market gangster clan. Yeah, it's the alternative to the Huts. You either yeah. deal with the Huts, or you deal with the Black Sun. Right, and with one fell swoop, Dave Filoni has brought in Black Sun as canon, mm-hmm. uh, which has been basically used throughout the books. Now, it, whether in Legends or in Canon, is like that's a done deal. Black Sun is Canon. Yeah. Oh right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And tying that into the Mandalores, right? It's with, almost like a yeah, kick-ass Sith. It's like a triumvirate of like three characters. If you were on the '90s, were promoted as being like the most badass thing ever. All three of which never really all mattered to anything. Right. Like, right. Prince Shizor kind of went nowhere. Right. Like, none of them actually ended it's up like being... It's like Dave Filoni takes his favorite action figures... Yeah. ...and puts them all together and he'd be like, yeah, this is how I'm going to play with these guys. But the great thing is the tragic twist. Yeah. At the end, it turns out that it's not going to be enough. No, because you're going up against the Emperor, ultimately. Yes. Right? Ultimately, you're going up against the Emperor. Now, before we get to the Empire, Emperor, the thing that I like about this is what... What I I didn't really get it the second time around, but the first time around around I really got it was like in a way like Darth Maul, the way it's told in the Clone Wars, is kind of responsible for creating the 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 uh, criminal underground. Oh sure, yeah, right. Like he kind of establishes the underground and his weird way of getting revenge. Yeah, you know, he kind of legitimizes this underground, and you know brings all these you know various uh, groups these players together. together. Yeah. yeah, you know, in in what essentially becomes you know like you know the the smugglers and the spice trade and the huts. He he kind of brings that like he tries to get the huts. Well, involved in this is ultimately the huts become uh and if you look at it if you talk about what you're saying like project forward the huts affiliation is with the empire ultimately yeah the yeah. huts don't want to have anything to do with him because the black sun are always on the outs then from then on yeah because they yeah. once again went against the empire yeah it, like it's a really great storytelling that ended up you know like it's it's the origin of Darth Maul getting cut in half in Phantom Menace yeah. really led to a great story. Well, and beyond that, I think this is this is kind of my thing with Rebels. Is that like I think this is an element of the Clone Wars working at its best. Yeah. Truly tying little bits of pieces together. Really, there's a bit of fan service, but like the twist at the end, it's like there's a dramatic turn. There's more to it. It's great storytelling, but it's filling in gaps and doing a little fan service. And I think that's really about the highest they can aspire to in sure. children's TV shows. Sure. I, like, looking back at Rebels now, it's like, they're, in the early episodes especially, there was a lot of opportunities, and they're trying to do a lot with these new characters, and trying to be kind of very art, like, have a lot of more artistry to it and stuff, but... It just all fell flat because I didn't care about anything. Sure. You know, it's like, because they're they're 20, you know, the episodes are 22 minutes. Yeah. And it's like, it's a lot to pack in. By tying it in with all this other stuff, it was like, you could really just get invested quick. You get a lot done. And yeah, I think they've learned that for season two, it looks like it's all going to be this kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm... Like the clones on the walker. Yeah, I'm not... I'm not discounting Rebels yet. I think I have high hopes for it. I hope for season two, but watching. I think this is what the sweet spot is, though, because like season one of Rebels, it's like there's none of this kind of thing happening. No, no. Watch, 
watching rewatching the Clone Wars again, it was it was such a breath of fresh air. Not to say that I didn't I I did enjoy Rebels. Yeah. I did enjoy Rebels for what it was, but watching again following it was a, fun. following a character, yeah. you know, in their or arc by using Wikipedia to you know figure out what episodes they were in. I was just like, wow, this is this is great storytelling. Not only great storytelling, like I I put up the the final battle between Savage Opress, Darth Maul, and the emp- the Emperor. Yeah, as one of the greatest lightsaber battles. Sure, like it's it's intense. Well, that was around the time when they figured out really how to show lightsaber battles in the, yeah. that cartoon. Yeah, because they started figuring out how you could do like. They started doing these great like cuts where like, and then also the dark saber was around then. Sure. And um, the dark saber is basically a black glowing lightsaber. It's as stupid as it sounds, is, but it's totally badass. Right, which is what the Mandalores use. It's yeah. totally like, yeah, let's give the Mandalores a lightsaber, but not a real lightsaber. And we talked about this early, early on in the podcast. Yeah. And we we came up with the rationale that made it work for us, <laughs> and that is that it's a very high tech, graceful piece of. You know, piece of equipment. It's like that is the Samsung tablet to the iPad. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> because like they kind of make a point also that like it's not quite as powerful. It's not quite as reliable. Yeah. Like you know. Yeah. yeah. It's just kind it, of a it's a knockoff technology. Right. And it's but man, it looks badass. Well, that's and the thing that's great about all of this, like the Darth Maul storyline in the Clone Wars. Like, it ties back to one of our other episodes, which is the Yoda Chronicles episode. Yeah, yeah. Is we have creators who are basically, like, like dumping their toy box out, right, on the table and being like, let's play with this and let's play with this and let's put this together and play with this. And they're actually creating, like, the stories that we would be, like, creating in our head when we were kids. Yeah, and it, but if you're going to, like add that hyperbole to it then you might as well just say that it's like it's like Shakespeare playing with toys though it's like people with a great understanding of dramatic mechanics yeah absolutely it's not like it's not like it's us I'm like I can't write a Star Wars story it's not like little kids playing with toys where it just ends with like a stupid like nothing no no right right. like it all goes somewhere yeah this is yeah yeah that's a that's a great distinction yeah like this is Star Wars kids that grew up and got their degree in literature. Yeah, and yeah. are now able to actually do something with it while still maintaining their childhood. Yeah. It's a pretty great little arc. Yeah. So let's wrap it up here with the... Um, oh, sorry. The the lightsaber battle. Awesome because awesome. they started doing this great thing where they would do these cuts. Yeah. Where, like, the blade would come right in front of the screen, like, close up. Yeah. And then it would, like, cut to something. Yeah. Like, the, yeah. yeah, they did... Yeah, they really understood how to animate and... Because the first couple mm. seasons, lightsaber battles were cool, but they weren't like quite, you know. Right. They got better. Like, By season four, they were like Season three, season four, watch the lightsaber battles in Clone Wars. Uh, we can't stress enough. Like, the Clone Wars, like, they they got their shit down. Like, not in every episode. There's some there's some weak arcs. But, you know, if you want to, again, follow, pick a character. Go on Wikipedia. Follow their arc. You'll, you'll be rewarded. Yeah, even if you go to Jar Jar Banks, you'll be rewarded. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyhow, so so moving on, we have so he's got his new legs now. Oh, so he's the got new all legs. Three. So yeah, he ends up getting new legs from the Mandalores, and now they actually look like regular legs. Where it's kind of they looked Star Wars. Yeah, that was what was nice. They're it was like, kind of that's what it would look like if I made this movie in 1977. That's yeah. what the leg, the robotic legs would look like. Yeah. They look real. They it's they don't draw attention to themselves like the other two iterations. Did. Exactly. Yeah. 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 They Where look it's like mechanical. oh, Darth Maul is you know he's got robot legs, but he looks like a, a whole person. Yeah, he's a whole person, but it's kind of it, they're kind of like just blocky. They look kind of like GI Joe legs. How I always yeah, think of them. Yeah. Yeah. So it works. It works. Um, unfortunately, uh, the the story of Darth Maul ends on a, a whimper right so he gets defeated by uh the emperor at the end of uh the clone wars story arc spoilers and savage is killed savage is killed by the emperor um kind of in a very qui-gon ish way he's kind of stabbed 
We're, when we're sidestepping a lot, too, because a lot of it we'll cover in the Obi episode. Yeah. It really yeah, yeah, crosses yeah, yeah. over tight. Yeah, there's that. a big crossover here. Um, but the Emperor kills Savage and basically defeats Maul. Mm-hmm. And he tells Maul that, you know, I have. Maul is like, are you going to kill me? And the Emperor is like, no, I have. I have worse things planned now for you. Now I and, have worse plans for you. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're going to. I'm going to give you a desk job. And your little dog, too. <laughs> yeah, um, I just love that, that vision of him just racking his brain afterwards. Like, oh, what can I have him do? What can yeah. I have? Yeah. Clean all the toilets <laughs> everywhere <laughs> in the galaxy. <laughs> I'm going to need you to come in on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah those TPS reports. <laughs> um, so that's where... It kind of ended mm-hmm. as, as the uh, series kind of uh, was... Uh, it's kind of dissipated. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we were given uh, one last go around with the uh, in-canon uh, Dark Horse comics. For a shoe miniseries, Son of Dathomir. Which we, we've already talked about on the yeah. epi- on our show and yeah. our disappointment with. Yeah, yeah. It was... Um, it, so it, this is kind of one of those things where it's a leftover script kind of deal. Uh, I'm not exactly sure when it's supposed to happen. So one thing we didn't talk about is that he, the Mandalorian followers he has, the Death Watch. Yep. A the Death Watch thinks fractures. I don't think they all go with him. No, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, there's there's some some in, go with him and some don't. There's some infighting going on. Yes. There. Yeah. And the ones yeah. that go with him though paint their helmets red. Which is cool. Right. They also put but horns on their... But they put little horns on their helmets. I think that's cool. That is not cool. I think it's cool. It's little cool. metal horns? They're not... I don't even know if they're metal. They're metal horns. They look goofy. Metal horn. Yeah. I'm all big fan of the metal horn. I don't know. It's just like the helmet's so nice. It's like, really? You put little horns on it? I was it? fine with it. It's I like was okay what? with it. It's like to look more like him? Yeah. That's... Yeah, that's not cool. Well, they don't know he's a that failure. Is, no, that is, that's weak sauce. <laughs> it's also I, like it's also like the boss is just getting really up in your shit. Then it's like not put little horns on. It's like why? To look more like me. It's like, what are we doing? Why are we doing this? It's yeah, so but it, it gets so meta then because like so many cosplayers. <laughs> so many cosplayers. <laughs> it is funny we see cosplayers wearing like the Darth Maul. Helper helmet things. It's like, wow, what is going on? I'm, I'm not just Boba Fett. I'm Darth Maul's Boba Fett. <laughs> Darth Maul's Boba Fett. That's my next tattoo. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, he. Um, so, in the Darth Maul, uh, Son of Dathomir, it's, it kind of gives you the storyline we never get in the series, which is uh, him facing off versus Dooku versus Grievous. Right. Because right, that's right. really what we always wanted in the series. And so they give it to us here, but it's kind of, uh, you know, it, it, it's a, it's cool, but it's like, it's of no consequence, yeah. ultimately. Yeah. I mean, uh, if I recall in the storyline, um, it looks like he's going to go down. He's got the uh, Black Sun guys there with him. Uh, he's got the Mandalorians with him. And the Mandalorians and... Uh, and the black sun people kind of start backing off. Like, they're yeah. like, we can't hold. Right. And it looks like he's going to get killed. Right. Mother Talzin comes in, uh, gives him a Super Saiyan kiss. And then at the end of it, it looks like she's dead now. Yeah, they kill they, her off. They kind of imply that she's dead. And then... Isn't this isn't this the same ending now? Like, And then he flies off, and that's it. Oh, he, he flies off? Or yeah. I thought it was the same ending like that we got in the series where it was like... Uh, He's captured, and Sidious is like, oh, "I, I have, I have worse plans for you." I don't know. I, I don't thought, know. It, I thought it ended with him flying off. I don't know. The the fact of the matter is, he's still alive, and he's still out there. Yeah, and he yeah. still could be used. Very likely that he is in the Force Awakens. Very likely. Very likely he's, he's played by Max von Sydow. That's exactly it. Yeah, Max von Sydow has to wear all that stupid makeup. <laughs> Age 92. He's like, you know, I was in this Igmar Bergman films. This is the meaning. You idiots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an actor with a capital A. And it's Awful. Like, 
It's oh, like, now look at you. You're Darth Maul. <laughs> <laughs> Bust out your double lightsaber, idiot. <laughs> uh, oh. So, um, yeah, I think we hit all the bases. We talked about the EU so. books. Yeah. We talked about the film. Yep. Um, the hype. The You know what's weird about the, the Phantom Menace? Hmm. So I've heard that, you know, originally they were supposed to talk more and they kind of cut the lines, all that stuff. Yeah, because Ray Park is not... Yeah, a well, good we all actor. well. I mean, his performance as Toad is ah, great. You know, he's his, actually kind of better as Toad. I like Ray Park. Um, I mean, he was also. He's a, I mean, he's also Snake Eyes and GI Joe. Yeah, he's a very, very good like physical, physical martial person, art, martial artist, or whatever you want to call him. He's one of like, the guys. That he should be an expendable. He's yeah, like a, a per totally. candidate for an expendable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. But um. So they're supposed to have more lines or whatever. I was always shocked that there wasn't more interaction between him and Little Annie. There's no interaction with Isn't him. Isn't that right? weird? There's no, well, because he's Vader. You can't. You can't. But that's the Vader. thing. Like, I always thought, like, I always, the Clone Wars did a really good job of having, like, Anakin encounter Vader-esque characters. Right. Which I always thought was cool because it was like, like, he kind of mentally logged that as like, well, if I ever intimidate someone, what's really intimidating is to, like. Sure. You know, but I say I, some ominous shit and then click off the communicator. Right. But what's and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe in the Clone Wars, mm-hmm. you never even get a grown up Anakin in contact with Darth Maul. I don't know if that's true or not. I feel like there is. I don't believe there is. I believe that they kept them separate. I remember they keep they, they keep them separate from Dooku a lot. They keep them separate from Dooku, but I I I want to say that there's like. One episode where Anakin shows up in in this, you know, Maybe eight or nine off. episodes, and he has, like, one line. Hmm. You know, it really is, like, like it's almost like Maul doesn't know Anakin exists because he's so focused in going after Obi-Wan. Yeah, it's very, yeah, that might be true. It's very odd, though. I, I just always thought it was odd about Phantom Menace is that, like, why Why wouldn't they? Like, it just seems so cinematic and cool to see this big, terrifying villain with this, like, cute oh, little sure. boy. Right, right? right. Yeah. Yeah, well. Yeah. I mean, you can't, can't remake these films. Yeah. But no. maybe yeah. you could CG. Maybe you could put him in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Darth Maul's got to be easy to CG, right? Sure. The horns. Oh, you yeah. He looks like, like a, looks like a sure. little character. Um. Yeah, I mean, I, do do you wish you had that now? Like after playing that seed in your mind, aren't you kind of like, boy, that would be cool? Like this isn't like a desert area, kind of. It's just like, like he's gonna kill the little boy because he's the chosen one. Kind of, but I I do it's wanna, a different movie. Now I want to think about movie. it, and I I I want to say that Anakin never it comes in contact with him, hmm. even in the Clone Wars. Well, I'm sure one of our great listeners out there could always call in and correct us and let us know. Or support us and say you're right. Just give us a call at 651-337-9364. That's 651-33-SW-DOG. That's right. And uh, I just said the number, so you know what that means, Ron. It's time to go. End of the episode. All right, folks. Until uh, next week when we talk about Obi-Wan. He's so smug. Oh. He's such a smug. The, it's the, you know, the character traits of Obi and Darth Maul, I think we'll probably talk about more in the next episode, but yeah. the character traits that, that they have are very, they mirror each other. They do. Yeah. Like, Darth Maul is smug in like an angry way. Yeah. He was like, I'm a badass, I'm a badass, I'm a badass. And when he's like, a, you know, he's a puss. Yeah. But like, Obi's got this other smug thing going. I look forward to next week's episode when you talk about Obi-Wan. Yeah. Because honestly... I think we're just going to be, for me personally, I'm just going to lean more towards like liking Maul. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's weird. Cause I really like. There's okay. There's a weird thing of repression going on with both these characters, right? Yes. Yes. Like Maul is a schemer and is actually smart and can do things. Yep. But he puts on this front of like aggression and like physicality. Yes. Which he ultimately is not very good at, apparently. Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. Whereas Obi-Wan has, like, this undercurrent of, like, physicality and, like, uh, like a lusty way about him. Yeah. But, like, represses it and, like, has this, like, prissy, dowdy 
over thing. You yes. know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's 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 weird. It's right? a weird. Yeah. Because we, like he's always acting like oh a more civilized age. Right. But, but he, then like every time when you watch Clone Wars, every time he gets a chance to like go undercover or hell, you know, he takes Luke to a bar and A New Hope. Yeah. It's like. You know, it's, you know, two minutes in, he cuts off a guy's arm. Yeah, we're in the bar. It's like, yeah, it's, it's a pretty dangerous place. You don't want to hang out here. And then he just like busts out like there, cuts off a guy's arm. It's like, it's like clearly this is a guy who's like into like weird. He's got a weird dark side to him. Yeah, yeah. That he just represses so hard by, oh, I'm so hoi floy and whatever. You All know. Right. Well, all right, let's tease it. Let's so leave the tease it. there. That's Next why week. they're back to back. Next week, Obi Wan. All Next right, week. folks. Until then. Stay granular! <laughs> it was a blockbuster summer. Love and Pictures got us through this September. They made a movie about me and you. How they made it hot, good, and hot, too. There was a blood sucking summer. I spent half the time trying to get paid for my savior. Swishing through the city center. I did a couple favors for these guys who look like Tuscan Raiders. <laughs>